Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today, a Friday morning. It's November 19th, 2021. The man they call me dead and returning is the Gentleman Squire, Matthew Thomas. Good morning, Matthew. Well, thank you. It's kind of strange. I returned, and then I left, and then I returned again. Um, you know, it's a like you got in, out, in, out, in, out. You must have heard the story about my man lotion. Yeah, yeah. How's that working out for you, meathead? Um, silky smooth. Uh, man, on. You, the, you, you didn't specify the brand, but it, it's Manslip, right? That's the, the brand you went with? You know what's funny is I found Manscaped actually at uh, the uh, Target that I went to, uh, you know, as far as getting uh, lotion for my dry skin. They sell Manscaped in the stores, too. Did you uh, did you take it to the checkout and try to enter your promo code? <laughs> no, I did not. Uh, but they are selling the lawnmower 4.0. Not an advertisement from uh, Manscaped.com right now, but I do want to know who sponsors our program right now. Oh, uh, that would be collar and elbow brand. Um, you know, just make sure you don't go too crazy with Meathead's lotion. You might just slip right out of your shirt. Uh, but you know, make sure that you know. This well, I did bartend so- for a while, and slippery nipples <laughs> were something that I was part of. And so, uh, yeah, head on over to the website. And I, right before the call, I was perusing the social media, and I believe I saw something that might be a new release. Not 100% sure. Maybe it's just new to me. So you never know what's dropping. And honestly, I'm seeing a lot of Christmas trees going up. You got to think they got some holidays, some Christmas uh, apparel in the works. So head on over to Man's – or. <laughs> Collar and elbow brand.com. Enter promo code Linda K. Save uh, 10%. L I N D A K A Y. Fair enough. Also, I want to mention this as well. We announced it yesterday in the program, and uh, tickets are on sale now. Shenaniganspartycom Kevin Nash hosting. I don't know how many it's been, but shenaniganspartycom As you know, I'll be going in there with my man lotion as a virgin to the shenaniganspartycom in Dallas this year on Friday, April 1st. Matthew, we will not, I promise you, will not be talking in monotone for the program that Friday morning. <laughs> oh, that's right. That will be the one-year anniversary of that, of that, of that classic of that show. that absolute train wreck of a show? <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe that's the way we need to... Uh, I don't know who's going to have the MC duties for the night of shenanigans, but maybe you and I need to MC in that, uh, that monotone is a little throwback. And hey, uh, and hey, <laughs> hey guys, uh, everyone, put your put your hands together for uh, for big 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 uh, big sexy uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Nash. <laughs> yeah, what a train wreck that was. <laughs> hey, let's talk about uh, the train wreck that is WWE. More releases. Uh, these popped off uh, late last night, and they were said to be budgetary. But according to an email sent out by head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis, uh, more talents have been released from WWE. The big name, John Morrison. The second set of big names, gone now. They got fired. Hit row, top dollar, Isaiah Swerve Scott and Ashante the Adonis. Also, Tegan Knox, Drake Maverick. So the 24-7 uh, cavalcade is down a man. Shane Thorne, who was the last known as Slapjack in Retribution. And Jackson Riker, who is now a officially a forgotten son, were all let go. My goodness, you know, I mean, what perplexes me is probably the biggest, you know, confusing thing out of this to me is actually Hit Row because you've got a stable that you were pushing hard at NXT. You thrust them to the main roster. You know, apparently a run was in store and then you let them go. I mean, these aren't necessarily people that are. It's not a budget cut. I mean, what are they paying them? Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It's. uh, it just it leaves you it leaves you scratching your head and then you go back to they've got not counting NXT you know what let's count NXT because I can't help but think like somebody like a Hit Row that were you know prominently featured on NXT that that there's a spot so counting NXT you've got seven hours of TV a week yeah. and I mean are we, are we going to get to the point where it's uh, as much as I love RK Bro are we going to see basically a three hour uh, infomercial of RK Bro and Raw each week. Hey, you know, once uh, Matt Riddle, the Matthew Thomas Matthew to watch in 2021, once uh, Matt Riddle starts singing, I hear voices in my head, they counsel me, they understand, and acoustic. I mean, that's kind of where we're heading towards. Well, hey, if you want to, if you want to check out some very good vocals, you're gonna have to do a little bit of digging on your YouTubes and Reddits. But there was a sturdy rendition of Country Roads, Take Me Home last night. 
by none other than your current AEW champion, uh, Hangman, last night in Norfolk, Virginia. That clip is out there uh, on the on the Internet. It's only going to take you about a minute and a half, two minutes to uh, to watch it with okay. a very uh, enthusiastic CM Punk looking onward. Fair enough. All right. Uh, a couple other uh, newsworthy notes that we want to get to. Uh, Kenny Omega will be hard down for a while. Uh, the uh, opening shot that was of him and the Young Bucks and Adam Cole on Dynamite, Kenny Omega is undergoing multiple surgeries. He's going to be out for uh, a bunch of months here. So yeah. Kenny Omega dropping the belts, getting the body rights. Kenny, we wish you a speedy recovery. Come back when you're ready. Don't rush it, all right? And then finally, let's talk about the health of Hulk Hogan. Uh, Ric Flair mentioned on his Woo Nation Uncensored podcast also that Hulk Hogan is uh, not looking good. But, you know, it, it's something that a tragedy, you know, can kind of do for you. Like when Ric Flair was going through the stuff with yeah. his son, Reed, Ric Flair uh, reached out to Hogan. Hogan's reached out to Flair when he was in health problems. Now Ric Flair's reaching back out to Hogan. I like to see a couple of the old schoolers just becoming very tight and close friends. So speedy recovery to Hulk Hogan as well. Matthew? No, absolutely. Um, you know, that's news to me. And, you know, there's some pictures that have been circulating recently. I mean, I think he's he's kind of had trouble getting around for a while. Um, don't necessarily know the specifics of, of any of this, but uh, certainly do wish him the best. Finally, let's talk WWE Survivor Series this Sunday on the Peacock and uh, PWR Draft in full effect. There's been some changes. Uh, now it's down to socials. The women's team on the SmackDown side did receive a new talent. Remember, they let Aaliyah go even after she won that tag team match and got the pin. She was dropped right off the team for some reason. Now added to the women's SmackDown traditional five-on-five -five team, Tony Storm. Um, I've always enjoyed Tony Storm's look because, Matthew, if you don't know, she is literally modeling herself after, like, Motley Crue's Nikki Six. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think a good addition and not as excited as I would have been if it would have been Tony Danza. Now, that would get some heads on that pay-per-view, right. man. That would sell some Peacock subscriptions Tony right there. Danza. You know, you know what? What you would need to do, you insert Tony Danza in that match and then have Peacock announce that they're adding the, you know, who's the boss to Peacock, man. I would be all in. Fair enough. All right, let's talk about the Women's Survivor Series match. Queen Zelina, Carmella, uh, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, and the captain, as it's being set up to us, Bianca Belair. On SmackDown side, the captain, Sasha Banks, uh, Shayna Baszler, Shotzi, Natalia, and now added, Tony Storm. I I really don't know what to call this based on anything. Um, I'm just going to go with the hunch and go SmackDown here. Okay. Uh, for sake of argument, I'll take Team Raw. All right. All right, let's talk about the men's side. The men's side on the SmackDown side, uh, coming up to tonight's SmackDown, still is missing a member. Remember, they removed Sami Zayn. So on the Raw side, you've got Bobby Lashley. Removed off the team are both Mysterios. Now you've got Austin Theory on there. You've got Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, and the unofficial captain, Seth Rollins. On the SmackDown side, the unofficial captain, Drew McIntyre, Jeff Hardy, King Woods, Happy Corbin. So, give me an idea of who you think the fifth member is. Uh, I'm going to steal your – well, you know what? i got to get somebody different than you. I know what you said off air. Yep. And it's okay. Is... Say what you say or I'll say it when you're done. Mm, this is SmackDown. Don't pick Top Dollar. He's not uh, working there. No. Or John Morrison. No, you know, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna say Brock. You're gonna say Brock Lesnar? Yeah, yeah, he seems like a good. really good team player. A man who's been suspended and fined a million dollars will be <laughs> playing for SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm going, I'm going Brock. Uh, what I said off air was uh, the the person that fills in is awesome, and it's the Miz. So not so not awesome Kong. No, not awesome Kong. She's retired as well. Hmm. What do you think about the Miz showing up and joining Team SmackDown? Uh, I, I mean, I think it would get it would get a pop. I, I don't know that it's necessarily super newsworthy. 
Okay. Well, I mean, he's done with Dance with the Stars, so I mean, yeah. it just makes sense. Let's go to the women's match that has a lot of national media attention. I do believe it's all being worked for the sake of wrestling, and I'm okay with it. Yeah, absolutely. But the Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, the SmackDown Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair, one-on-one for nothing other than yeah. Bright Nights. I think I think you need to go Becky, and I think you need to go Becky clean because this heel version of Becky, since she's come back, you know, it, it's she back. has, yeah, she hasn't gotten that many conclusive wins. I'm not saying that it needs to be clean, but I think that you know, with you quintessentially having two heels going up against each other, you know, you can, you have a little bit more leeway. You don't necessarily have to have a heel going over Who's by the cheating. Heel your heel of the two heels. I think Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I think this is where I think you go, you go Becky here. I mean, it's just, I don't know. These, these are, these inner brand matches are hard to predict. And I don't think they're very constructive because at the end of the day, man, you are going to have, what does it do for the company? What does it do for the rest of the roster? Because you're going to put one champion over another champion. And so quintessentially, I, I know theoretically it's not mean it's a lesser title, but I just don't think that these matches, they're not constructive for two reasons. One, the person who loses is going to look like not the stronger champion. Yes, like two, two, there's no stakes on the line. So you're, this is a pay-per-view Going Omaha in where, where you know there's no Omaha stakes and you know no titles are going to change hands. Okay. All right. Men's side, WWE champion from Raw, Big E. Universal champion from SmackDown, Roman Reigns. You got to protect Roman and the, and the title reign. I mean, they, he's cruising into one of the longer reigns of the modern era. And, no pun intended. Yeah, and I think that you're you're just – you know, Big E, I think can take the can take the loss, and you're probably. I still think you're probably looking moving towards New Day versus uh, Bloodline. I, I think this is another That's step a towards big that. Six yeah. man match that needs to be on the Royal Rumble, honestly. Yep. Yep. All right, uh, tag champions. Speaking of Bloodline, the Usos and RK Bro. Huh. As much as I hate to uh, pick against my uh, my crew, my uh, my pride prize team of RK. Oh, Bro, don't worry, they're not losing anything in this. No, they're not losing anything. I think for the say, if you are going, if you're really trying to push uh, New Day Bloodline, I think you need to go Usos here. Okay. Finally, uh, the the mid level. The Intercontinental taking on the United States champion. Uh, and we have not seen him on TV in a couple weeks. Um, with all these cuts, you would think they'd be short on talent. But Damian Priest, the United States champion, taking on the Intercontinental champion, Shinsuke Nakamura with Rick Moves. By the way, we didn't mention this uh, from the pay-per-view. Your thoughts on uh, Britt Baker DMD being played in by Fozzy Guitarist? That was cool. I it mean, was better it, than the the sing along with the guitar playing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I- anytime you can get live music on I- anybody played in, you know, I'm uh, I'm I'm fine with it. This match that you just uh, that we're talking about right now, Shinsuke and Nakam- uh, Nakamura and Damian Priest, this might be match of the night. I think this has huge, huge potential against two guys that I think are going to match up very, very well. Um, Damian Priest with Strong a little bit of a size and, advantage, uh, but yeah, but very, but very sim- similar styles here. Uh, so I, you know, I enjoy Boogs, but I think that let's keep this as serious as we can, man, because I think that you've got, you've got a potentially really, really good matchup here. All right. Also tonight, we've got SmackDown and, uh, Rampage. Let's talk first about SmackDown. Uso showed up on Raw. So who shows up on SmackDown tonight? Is it the RK bro? Um, Or is it Damian Priest to go after Shinsuke? You're more likely to get RK bro j- just because of the the positive crowd response. I mean, I think that's that makes for a more entertaining show and more entertaining uh, crowd environment. Okay. Rampage tonight. We've already got the matches announced. What are you looking forward to? You know what, man? I'm actually very intrigued by Darby and uh, and Billy Gunn. 
I am too, and I, I don't know why I am, but I mean, this is really a mix of, you know, generation styles. I mean, it's a, it, it's a mix of generation styles and size. Yeah. I mean, all of it. I mean, you know, uh, and uh, seniority and, you know, it's, it's, it, I would, it would make more sense to me just, you know, if you were to put it on paper, having one of his kids wrestle Darby, but we're having Papa Gun go out there to rest Darby. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm excited about that. And, and that's another thing that I really enjoy about AEW. And I mean, they, they've got a very, very expansive roster, but you know, both of these guys have quintessentially been with the company since the start. Right. And we're getting this stuff that, that feels new to us on a weekly basis. Yeah. But the other two matches are Adam Cole and Bobby fish taking on jungle boy and Luchasaurus. And in the, that bitch show tournament, Jade Cargill and red velvet. Yeah, I mean, I think Jade advances, and I'm really excited about the combination of Adam Cole and Bobby Fish. You know, I mean, I know they've kind of been walking around in each other's orbits a little bit, but this is a uh, it's another another incarnation of of two guys that you you can put together and some throwbacks to their NXT days. Huh, good old Budge. Did you see the shirt? I talked to Linda about it. The shirt on Wednesday night. Oh that, uh, yeah, Johnny Hungy was wearing. Yeah, yeah, no, that was that was pretty wonderful. Uh, maybe you can help me. Uh, was Budge the name that uh, they were going to call Adam Cole if he got called up to the main roster? I don't know that that ever officially released or not. So my understanding of where all this came from, I think it was a YouTube show maybe being the elite or something. Basically, you've got um, you've got Johnny Hongi talking about how he wants to have Adam Cole be his manager and he's going to call him, but he's going to give him a haircut and call him budge. So basically the stuff that was potentially being floated in WWE, I don't yeah. think the budge was necessarily a WWE thing. I think this was something he kind of made off on the cuff, but my understanding that's where it originates. And me being the dedicated broadcast journalist slash researcher that I am, I know <laughs> you and Linda had a question as far as the uh, turtles reference last uh, Wednesday night with the uh, backstage segment with Darby and the gun club. I didn't know that either, but that's why I put, you know, my boots to the pavement or my uh, fingers to my phone and actually uh, researched it. So where that originates at, there is a, a YouTube video from a, a news clip. It's a news clip from somewhere, probably 07 ish, 08 ish or something, but there's a little, yeah. there's a young kid, yeah. seven or eight years old in face paint, it looks a lot like Darby, what Darby wears now. Yeah, and, yeah, and he, yeah. <laughs> and he's at he's at a circus or a fair or something. He and was at like, the waterfront at, park in downtown Portland. Channel was that what, was that where that he was is, at? Zombie kid likes turtles on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'm happy to help you solve all the mysteries of. Oh, this. that is it. While you were talking, I typed in. Turtles I like, and boom, there it is. Folks, I like turtles. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That I mean, that mystery has been solved. It's from 2007, by the way. And, you know, I'm doing some more research, and I hope to uh, – I hope to have the Kennedy assassination solved by shenanigans in Dallas next year. So uh, pre pre shenanigans, I might have to host my little uh, my own thing over in, in Daily Plaza and make my make my announcement. Is that one of the things that we're going to be looking around? Because, Matthew, I mean, we're going to end up hanging out in Dallas. We'll call in my boys from Dallas and they're going to take us to the grassy knoll. huh? Oh, ab absolutely. And I think that they've actually. If I'm not mistaken, I think the school book depository is actually a museum now. Thank so, you for uh, saying depository because the first time you said it, you said suppository. Yeah, well, they've got those in Dallas too. Fair enough. All right. Well, that is the week in wrestling. That is the week in PWR. Programming note for you guys. Next week, we will have a Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and a Wednesday morning show. It is Thanksgiving week. We will not be having a Thursday or Friday show, and then we'll return back again. So, Monday morning with Linda Kay, we will break down Survivor Series. Matthew will talk to you on Tuesday and Wednesday. So for Matthew Thomas and Linda Kay, the man they call me to, thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.